Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're working out a problem that looks short and sweet, but has a bit of hidden difficulty in it due to some calculus that we need in order to get to the answer. So if we start off from the top, we have the position of a 2.75 times 10 to the 5 Newton training helicopter uh, given by this position vector right here. And all that we need to do is find the net force on the helicopter at this specific time. So not a whole lot of information given here, but some things are a little hidden. Right here, where we're told this number, uh, this is actually the weight. So W is 2.75, uh, we'll say E to the 5 newtons. And when we're told that we need to find the net force, the net force comes from Newton's second law, and you've probably seen this before. If I write it as a vector equation, uh, it is F equals MA, but F and A are vectors. And that's what we need to do. We need to find an expression from the stuff that we've been given to fill out this equation. And um, the weight gives us the mass. In fact, we can kind of algebraically represent that by saying, uh, you know, W is equal to mg. So then W over G is equal to m. Okay, so that's one piece of the puzzle solved. The main thing that we need to do is get from uh, the position vector to the acceleration vector, right? That's the big thing that we need to do in this problem. And so the way that we're going to do that is by using calculus. We're going to use uh, two derivatives in order to get there. And um, I'm, I don't think I'll have enough room to do that nicely on this page. So I am going to copy this expression uh, to a fresh one and I will show you how that's done. So mathematically, what we are going to say is we're taking a derivative with respect to t, or time, of, um, can I erase this? Yes, there we go, of this expression right here, right? d over dt of everything in here. And the calculus rule that we're applying just as a reminder, if you're not familiar, is the power rule. It looks like this. If you take d over d uh, t of x to the t, uh, we end up getting t times x to the t minus 1. That's the only thing that we're going to use in this problem whatsoever. There's no further complicated calculus rules going on here. So. If I take the derivative of this expression with respect to t, um, I'll write out uh, kind of the full thing on the first line, and then going forward, uh, I'll just kind of uh, write it shorthand. So um, with this first term, this uh, exponent would be dropped out in front. So we have 3 times 0 0.020 meter per second cubed times t to the 3, and we're subtracting 1. And that is all encapsulated in the i-hat direction. And we are adding um, one thing that you can kind of do to make it a little bit easier and obvious what's going on whenever you see just t, is you can represent that as t to the first power. So then in that case we're going to do the same thing where the power gets dropped out in front of the coefficient. So we have 1 times 2.2 uh, meters per second and that's multiplied by t to the 1 minus 1 all encapsulated in the j hat direction. And then finally for the k uh, we have minus we're taking the 2, we're dropping it down in front, 
So 2 times the coefficient already out in front, 0 0.060 meters per second squared, multiplied by t squared. I'm, I'm going to subtract 1. Um, and that's it for the k hat direction. That's what the derivative is doing uh, if you're not familiar with how that mathematical function behaves. Uh, if I simplify this, I get um, 0 0.060 meter per second cubed times t squared, and that chunk is in the i hat direction. I am adding um, 1 times 2.2 is just 2.2. Um, meter per second. t to the zero, well rather anything to the zero, including t, is just equal to one. And so there is no t expression at the end, and we can close that bracket off, and that's it for the j-hat direction. Continuing on, we get minus 0 0.120 meter per second squared times t k hat direction. So that's the first derivative. Okay? And uh, technically, technically, we can kind of underline all this and say that this is equal to uh, the velocity vector with respect to time of this particular um, object. Okay. So if we take a derivative of the velocity, we end up at the acceleration, which is exactly what we want. So we're not quite done. We, we need to do this process one more time. Um, I'm going to erase this green line and uh, copy this expression into another derivative so I don't have to write it all down again. Um, do this. It might cut off a little bit, so forgive me on that. Hopefully it's still easy to read. This was our first derivative. I'll call it deriv, period, right there. And then here's our second deriv, period, derivative, right there. And we're doing d over dt of everything that we just wrote for that velocity vector. Oops, pardon me. We're doing the same process again. We're essentially doing it two times in a row. And it's the same rule, same approach, same everything. Um, I'm going to, again, like I said before, save a step. I'm not going to do everything in two steps. I'm going to do it all in one. But remember, the, pro the approach excuse me, is the exact same. Nothing is different. So if I do exactly the same thing, I'll end up with uh, 0 0.060 multiplied by 2, so 0 0.120 meter per second cubed, multiplied by t instead of t squared, that chunk all in the i-hat direction. Notice that there's no t in the j-chunk, the uh, j-hat chunk, pardon me. Since there's no t, uh, that's like taking the derivative of a constant value. And the rule for taking the derivative of a constant value is just, it's zero. So um, I'm just going to say zero. We don't care about that. Um, you can choose to write zero j hat if you like. Um, you may want to do that if your instructor or your grader wants you to, but otherwise you don't have to write it at all and it's implied that that particular component is zero and that's what I'm going to do. Um, so here notice we're going to take a derivative of the k hat chunk and since there's only just t um, we can kind of fix this plus to be a minus and the number stays the same, 1, 2, 0 meter per second squared, but now with no t, just by itself. So we are about 30% of the way done. This, the vector that we just solved for, 
is equal to the acceleration vector at all times. This is what it is. At all times t, the i hat component is going to be constantly increasing. And at all times, the k hat value is always going to be this constant negative number. It's never going to change. So what we need to do is take this equation, this one right here, and we need to figure out what the expression would look like at t is equal to 5 seconds. So let's go ahead and do that on a fresh page. Um, I'm going to get rid of that underline there. Uh, this was a of t. So if I do this, copy, um, oops, I'm going to do a new, don't say this. Here's what we have. This is the acceleration vector that we just solved for. And if we plug in uh, t is equal to 5 seconds, so at t is equal to 5 seconds, what will we have? Well, we'll have 1, or excuse me, 0 0.120 meter per second cubed times 5 seconds all in the i hat direction minus 0 0.120 meter per second squared in the k hat direction. And what does this look like? If you take 0 0.120 and multiply it by 5, you'll get 0 0.6. So the acceleration vector at t is equal to 5 seconds is equal to 0 0.6 meter per second squared all in the i hat direction minus uh, this value in the k hat direction, which doesn't change always constant since there's no there's no variable associated with that component so this particular acceleration expression is what we're going to use in f equals ma you know we had sum of the forces is equal to m a this is what's going into here. That's what we're going to plug it into. And so ultimately our expression, the sum of the forces, uh, the net force, the, ex the uh, vector expression, is the following. If we go back to what the weight was, we have W divided by G is equal to M, so 2.75 e to the 5 newtons divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. That's what the mass is. That's m. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll make that a little obvious. This is m right here. Okay. And now what we have to do is multiply that scalar value by this vector value. 0 0.6 meter per second squared i hat minus 0 0.120 meter per second squared k hat. So we're almost done. We just have to multiply these two things together. And so if I take 2.75 e to the 5 and divide it by 9.8 and I multiply that value times both of the components of that acceleration vector, uh, here is what I get. Um, I'm going to answer it to two significant figures because if we go back to our original problem description, uh, we have three here, but we have two here, two here, and two here. It's important to note that leading zeros in a number like this one do not count as significant figures. We're only counting 
uh, where the number starts and then any numbers to the right of that. And we are supposed to report our answer to the smallest number of significant figures, so that would be 2. So when you multiply um, this scalar and distribute it to both components and truncate it to two significant figures, here is what you should be getting. Um, I'm going to use approximately equal to. Um, I get 1.7 e to the 4 newtons located in the i-hat direction and then minus 3.4 e to the 3 newtons in the k-hat direction. And this vector right here that I am boxing in purple, this is our final answer. This is the net force on the helicopter at five seconds um, that's undergoing you know that particular or that that experiences that particular weight that's the answer right there and that's what we're looking for uh, this particular vector expression is our answer thanks for watching take care